people talked about, and we just do a, another big summary, but with our new new thinking. Now, remember, I talked about Einstein Rosen Bridge. Now, now, so there is another spin of this. In the um, imagine, if you have black hole does not evaporate entirely, but down to some tiny size, then the question is follow. Would that help to serve as a bridge toward to a much bigger volume somewhere else? And John Wheeler, in fact, has uh, found that or, or argued that such is not inconsistent, such a solution of space-time is not inconsistent with general relativity. He called this the, a bag of gold. So you, it's like a bag of gold. So black hole may, may look very small, but it's space-time volume inside may be huge. It's a, bit, a little bit like wormhole we talked about this time. Okay. Now, so is there such a, what's the physical um, argument for the existence of such a uh, remnant? Then here I'll have to uh, uh, give, give you two pages of explanation. There's something called generalized uncertainty principle. We just talked about uncertainty principle earlier. But remember that the standard uncertainty principle is worked out in Minkowski space-time, flat space-time. Now, when you come to issues of black hole, which is all wrinkled, this time, unlike usually we say, well, this is the quantum corrections to gravity, quantum correction to whatever. This time is gravity correction to quantum. Now, because gravity is becoming so important now, at the Planck scale, for example. Now, so you found that the standard uncertainty principle needs to be modified with an extra term, which involves Planck length square again, area square area, which has h bar there. So this is, but no, I'm sorry, not just h bar. It has a gra Newton's constant inside. So this term is gravity contributed. But notice that when you write it in this way, your dx delta x is unlike the, the standard uncertainty principle, which is inversely proportional to delta p. The second term is proportional to delta p. So if you do a, a, a graph, then one over you know y equals to one over x, you write this, and then y equals to x, you write that, you draw that, and then you put it together, it becomes like that. Now quickly you say, aha, this generalized uncertainty b principle says that this delta x has a minimum. It cannot be indefinitely go to zero. And this minimum, not surprisingly, has to do with this value. Plus length. Now, you apply this to, you just repeat what Hawking told us. I throw in uncertainty principle and tell you that there is a evaporation, right? So I, I throw in this generalized uncertainty principle and I found that the black hole cannot evaporate all the way down to zero. By the time when the Schwarz rate show radius uh, reduced down to the Planck length, there's a minimum length. The temperature goes stop. Okay, evaporation stop. Temperature comes to a maximum. So that's kind of a uh, uh, what we say. By the way, this is not protected by any symmetry principle, but more like the, our hydrogen atom. I mean, this this black hole remnant thing. In the case of hydrogen atom, no physical principles forbid that the orbiting electron to fall into the proton and disappear, I mean, and become an what, whatever, neutron. But why can a hydrogen atom be stable for 13 billion years? It's dynamic, same as here. All right, now, firewall. So this is the naked firewall that uh, I was talking about, and this was a uh, the uh, uh, brainchild of a workshop that I organized at the uh, Yukawa Institute in for theoretical physics in Kyoto University. Uh, they call this type of workshop only a few people molecular type, and I never understood. So I asked their director, why not nuclear type, atomic type, uh, quark type? Uh, they said, well, I don't know. So it's called molecular type workshop. And uh, it's because I was on my sabbatical visiting there, and uh, director uh, Sasaki-san said, why don't you then just take this opportunity to organize something? I said, okay, I'll organize a workshop on information loss paradox. But uh, unlike ordinary, uh, usual workshop, 
I want everybody to promise that in the end of the two weeks, we should write a paper. Uh, so that's how we work. And this one is that down page, now with white hair and white, white beard. Um, you can see that not everyone uh, was, was in the authorship because some didn't participate continuously. This, by the way, is the, uh, is the, the uh, original office used by uh, Professor Hideki Yukawa. And uh, if, you, if you do not know, he is an uh, ex excellent calligrapher, Chinese character. He writes so well. Uh, these are his own handwriting. Yu Yuan, uh, traveler, and Xiaoyu Yuan. So this is uh, Yukawa Institute. And these are the survivors for the second week. Uh, yeah. And this person eventually did not join us in the writing. And this well, is here. It looks like he always liked to write uh, wear blue. <laughs> and, and this is the engine. Uh, down page, this is uh, Misao Sasaki, uh, an extremely well-known cosmologist. Uh, so this is our blackboard. And uh, we have to put out a, a Japanese uh, sign here. Don't erase. <laughs> All right, this is too many, too many words, so let me just simply say by words that, uh, yeah, too busy, that what we're saying is that since Hawking evaporation is a quantum process, so quantum fluctuation is inevitable, especially if you have to think that Hawking, the lifetime of a black Hawking evaporation is very slow, 10 to the 67 years. Imagine. This radiation is not like our usual radiation. It only spit out once in a long while. So it's all random, and there's always back reaction. The black hole will back react. And lo and behold, it's like a trunker of random walk. Eventually, <coughs> the event horizon of the black hole will uh, be pushed inside of the, uh, of the supposed, it's, it's supposed um, horizon if there was no such fluctuation. If the emission, Hawking emission, is entirely smooth, then the event horizon will be at somewhere where the firewall would be. Now, because of these random walk or, or, or back reaction, this uh, event horizon will be detached. Okay, And te tele teleological means that this is tracing back from the future. All right, so then we say, so we say that these four gentlemen, APMS, uh, is, is, is problematic because now a distant observer will be able to see this firewall. Now, what's wrong with that? Now, this APMS statement is true for any black hole, not just small bit, but GR already told us, black holes like Madon Pays are LIGOs are totally classical. It's just you know tons of solar mass. Yet they they may maybe they should have also a firewall, but we never see. Okay, so there's some problem already. We all we are saying is that this may not be that conservative as they claim. We're not saying anything else. It's not conservative. Now, so um, some likes to be fancy, and then I say, well, there's something called Penrose diagram. In gravity, it's as useful as the Feynman diagram for particle physics. Now, here I put down a standard one. If you have a classical black hole, then uh, so a stellar a star will, will you know due to gravitational collapse will eventually turn into a black hole, and this is the final uh, singularity. And we usually draw a horizontal line there, and the red region is the interior of the black hole, and there is an event horizon. Okay. Uh, usually in the Penrose diagram, the, uh, the, this, this boundary towards the uh, upper left is called future, uh, infinite future. And this one going down is called infinite path. Okay. And the light cone is going like this way. Now, <coughs> what we are saying is that, uh, first of all, this is slightly more uh, fancy now, uh, similar diagram, but what we are saying is that your apparent horizon means that when your star starts to fall in, there's some, some boundary where you, it seems like a horizon, 
but this changes in time gradually. Now, um, if you then, okay, so this half time is called the page time. Now, what we're saying is that uh, these, uh, the, well, the APMS gentleman said that now there is a firewall turning up. And we're saying that due to this firewall, if it does exist, frankly, I don't think it exists, then the back reaction of the black hole will then move its, we call adiabatic horizon, move this, its supposed horizon, like here, like here, backwards, inwards, to here. This is its new event horizon. And this is actually, we, in a sense, we predict it. So we say heliological down to here. Now, unfortunately, if that's true, that these things, this, uh, this firewall, will be seen by people looking back from the future. So it's here. So it's naked. Now, can I have five more minutes? Is it okay? Yeah, because I have a, uh, this is the uh, famous uh, Binkaku G, well, actually G means temple. So, but anyway, um, it's within three minutes bicycling from uh, Yukawa Institute. I back there. And uh, here's my own drawing when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks very tranquil, but I guarantee you there are tons of people around me. Young girls with kimonos and insisting on taking a photo with me and so on. But uh, I, of course, do not put them in, otherwise, they will ruin this drawing. <laughs> So this is another famous uh, uh, scene in Kyoto. It's called Philosopher Path. Um, again, this is right outside in Kaguji uh, by the by the, the small brook, and uh, so tranquil. I walked on the, along there many many times, uh, thinking about black hole. <laughs> and this was my own drawing. Now. Uh, what I loved the most was this, you know, late afternoon sun. Is it pink so-so? And uh, no, it's uh, this. So it's uh, one time here. You, you cannot, you cannot change. I see. I see. Right. No. So, uh, so I do do that for fun. Okay. Now the remaining five minutes, I'm uh, trying to uh, suggest the following. Remember, I said that the black holes, heavenly black holes were all too huge, meaning their Hawking temperature is too low. The corresponding wavelength is huge. It's uh, totally swallowed by background space. And in addition, they are too young. Our universe is only 40 million <coughs> years old. So to, in order to, uh, to resolve this issue of information loss, you need to investigate the end line, the late time black hole gap like what I was drawing in the previous diagram. Early time does not tell you much. It was uneventful, like the page was saying. So I uh, apologize that this is my own hand drawing of a, a conceptual design of an, of an experiment. And time is not enough, so I'll just uh, let it pass. And, um, and also, uh, just to let you know, there is something called the, an, uh, an analog of black uh, Hawking effect. It's called Anu effect which is uh, not, well, it's, it, it's important by its own sake. Okay. Back in 1999, uh, Tsujima and I uh, proposed an experiment using ultra-intense laser to uh, do an experiment to provide a, a violent acceleration at the nodal point, anti-node point, where there's only E field to violently accelerate uh, test electrons. And this electron to find himself, itself, surrounded by a thermal heat map with a temperature that goes very much similar to the Hawking temperature. There is, a, there is a, 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 an effective event horizon surrounding it. That's actually the light cone of this particle. Okay, so you can use this to mimic this and study black hole in the lab. That's the point. Now, <clears throat> to tell you about my accelerating plasma mirror, I need to uh, quickly uh, explain to you that there is something called plasma wave field. It was invented to uh, to um, 
help the future uh, high energy physics to make a thousand times more efficient acceleration than our current uh, acceleration mechanism. First uh, proposed by Tajima and Dawson in 79, and then by myself and Dawson, et cetera, in 1985, using particle beam. They suggest laser beam. But either laser pulse or particle pulse, they did the same thing. That is, there is a wake behind it, very much like a boat, uh, the wake of a boat on the, on the lake, where the phase velocity of the, of the wave or the wake behind is equal to the group velocity of the boat. That's why the, the wake behind the boat is like a ribbon. If you're a camera, you just keep following the boat. This thing behind it seems to be just a piece of some solid piece of something that keeps following. But in fact, you know that the water molecules never change location. They are just going up and down, right? It's the phase velocity that follows, the group velocity of the wave. This, by the way, is traversing against a plasma which is already pre-ionized. And the unit volume charge density can be 10,000 times higher. And if you manage to separate them, either by a laser or a particle beam, you would create such a tremendous effect behind it. And this has actually become a huge industry in the, in the world. There's so many now laboratories studying that. The latest including this new project called AWAKE. This is the particle beam driven experiment, uh, wave field experiment uh, to be carried out at CERN. Actually, this is ongoing already. Many, many nature papers being generated. 100 GeV per meter is already demonstrated. Unfortunately, it's only very short distance, so the challenge is to make it long. Now, these three gentlemen, Milano, Esoper, uh, Kepo, and Tajima in 2003 suggest that the same mechanism of plasma wave field in the deep nonlinear regime when the, when the plasma was pushed back so much so that it becomes a delta function like this. This is the driver. And then you can put a, a, part, a, a test particle here or a beam here. This can see a tremendous derivative, which is the field strength, and uh, can be accelerated. Now, so these gentlemen said, OK, this plasma weight has another utility. If you then, but they are traveling, if you now uh, send a source beam, a laser pulse, ordinary optical, let's say, one micron type, hit against this wave, and when it is reflected or rebounds, then there are two, there are two uh, advantages. One, there's a large boost, so that the, the new frequency is four times gamma squared higher. Gamma is the gamma of this. And being shorter in wavelength, they can be focused to a more, much smaller spot. So their intensity is tremendously increased. Now this can be uh, carried out also if you have a piece of solid and you hit this laser on the solid and it can rebound and then you're, you have a piece of plasma mirror uh, because, because of the, uh, the electrons will be kind of uh, kicked out, in, you know, compressed and then, and then rebound. So now, using that, um, these people uh, did uh, computer simulations and uh, indeed demonstrate that this, this is working out. Now, <coughs> so in a sense, this delta function type of density compilation uh, in a way is somewhat like a tsunami, which is a nonlinear phenomenon. So the ocean waters are kind of compiled there, but they did move uh, forward. Right? Now, when they approach the shore, the, the, the sea bottom has a slope. The water is gone, becoming shallower. And this, this, uh, this uh, wake changes its velocity. Now, uh, so, well, this is too, much, too many words. Let me just give you the diagram. So the idea I'm having is to, oh, how come I did not have the, another pick? Is to prepare a solid state, a solid target, which has a graded density. This can be done, and I rely on Minghui and other experts in nanofabrication technology to deposit, to, to do the, uh, uh, how do we call this? Epitaxy, layer by layer, and with a with a gradual change of density. And what what I'm doing here is that this wake 
being created can can increase its velocity, can be accelerated. And this can be served as an accelerating mirror. Now, all the black hole experts will tell you that accelerating mirror is a, well, let me restate. Since 1970s, late 70s, four decades, if you go to the most famous black hole or quantum field theory encodes space time textbook, such as the one by Biro and David, there was always chapters <coughs> dedicated to moving mirror, accelerating mirror, because that's a very important uh, mathematical or Gedanken uh, experiment in deciphering all these problems because it provides, a perfectly reflecting mirror provides a horizon like, no, it's not it actually, the horizon is really this, this, this line. This is the origin. This is uh, the, the trajectory of the accelerating mirror is equivalent to the origin, the singularity of the black hole. So, but 40 years has passed, no one came up with an idea of how to do it. I already said that you cannot resolve this uh, uh, information loss paradox through direct observations. The only hope lies in the laboratory. Now, thanks to the advancement of laser technology and nanotechnology, I combine them together, I think this can be done. Now, then you can imagine, while this, this mirror is accelerating, all the quantum fluctuating pair of particles, what stop, if one hits the, the world line of this accelerating mirror, will be reflected and as observed as a photocopy particle. Now, the pair that goes has straight along the line, uh, along this uh, horizon, is, is, uh, is not able to come out in, until all of a sudden this mirror stops, like the end of the black hole evaporation. Then, by hitting the world line, now it goes straight. There may be tons of these pair partner particles uh, uh, emitting out, like a burst of energy. So if you can observe this burst of energy, then you say, aha, so Don Page may be, may, you know, may be right. I mean, there may be some, uh, something to there. By the way, this idea was first uh, suggested by Frank Wilchin. Now, but there are also other experts, such as Anru himself, uh, believe that although unitary, by the way, this is in the lab, it's a blast space, space time, so there, unitarity is guaranteed to, come to, 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 uh, to be uh, honored, okay? So there's not an issue of whether unitarity is lost or not. But whether you can see this burst of energy is still under debate. Some experts said, well, all these uh, uh, partner modes will eventually dissolve into back into the black hole. You will see no emitting energy. So, uh, so I think it's extremely important to uh, to do an experiment to find out. So, in brief summary, the war continues to rage. Now, in 70, 1916, we said Schrödinger found the solution. 1974, we found Hawking found that the uh, black hole is not black. But evaporates uh, black body radiation. 204, Hawking accepts the defeat uh, in his bet, and then he agrees that the black hole uh, information uh, indeed can escape from, from, black, from the black hole. 2012, the four gentlemen said there can be a firewall, but it would never be observed. 2016, we said that, no, that's not true. Okay. The firewall is dangerous. Thank you very much. Who proposed this false uh, solution, namely the generalized uncertainty principle? The and, generalized uh, uncertainty principle. Uh, and uh, is there any way to validate it? Yeah, very good question. Um, I was not the original uh, originate uh, proposer. This generalized uncertainty principle was first uh, suggested by a person uh, named Mead, M E A D, and to my disappointment, he was a chemist, He's not a physicist. In 1956, Minnesota University. Of or somewhere. He found that you, if you uh, confront general relativity against uh, quantum mechanics, 
you will have to have this correction term. Then over age, over time, different experts came up and say this is that. In the 1980s, <coughs> Veneziano, who was the PhD advisor of uh, Fabian Roger, yeah, our fellow here, now was among the first to suggest that string theory uh, implies generalized conservatives. And then uh, Gross, David Gross quickly wrote another paper, and then in 1995, Witten wrote a paper in Physics Today, again, uh, repeat, but without quoting, without citing Veneziano. But anyway, that's not very important. Uh, and then quant loop quantum gravity idea also suggests the existence of generalized uncertainty principle. I worked with uh, a famous uh, uh, you know, general relativity expert, Ron Adler, and in the year 2001, we uh, rederived that uh, generalized uncertainty principle, but more importantly, we apply that to black hole evaporation problem. As we all know, Hawking's original calculation was semi-classical, so it, uh, it assumes that the black hole, the back reaction is small. So the original calculation can never be extrapolated to the end. And so that's, that's been an open question for 40 years. Well, at to, up to, to year 2000, it was for 30, 30 years. But uh, we solved that problem. Okay, so according to what you said, they are right. Uh, yes, but um, but <coughs> as far as application to black hole evaporation is concerned, it is um, uh, my paper was cited only 380 times, so it's it's not like 3,800 times. So it's not the one that is already say everybody from Weinberg to uh, Witten all agree, but uh, it's being widely recognized. No, but my question was that uh, how does one test it? Testing. Yeah. This is unfortunate because the second term is so tiny. Right? There's the, the Planck length square involved. Is there any way that one it's day a, we can it's hope an excellent to question. It? Let me let me think about. But uh, up to this second I would say I don't know anything. Uh, another question is that, uh, as far as I understand, Hawking radiation has never been observed. That's right. Correct. Correct. So, so my referee said, well, this accelerating mirror paper said, even if you can see the Hawking, even if you can observe the, this part, this part, it's already. Historical. He said, you don't even need to worry about information uh, loss business. Yeah, we, we not observe that. Yeah. Okay, any other question? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, Dr. Concerning this experiment, I was a bit interested because this is strictly flat space time, and if this space time is flat, then this system shouldn't have any temperature. So why would we expect some sort of analogy with Hawking's radiation from a system like this? This is a good question, thanks to Bill Unruh. By the way, wait, Unruh has offered to uh, spend his sabbatical visiting us, uh, our department next spring. So you know, please uh, kind of anticipate that. Now, <coughs> Unruh told us that if you have some physical thing that is accelerating, then that, that thing will find itself in his own frame. That it was surrounded by a heat back. You know that a very, uh, almost first page of quantum field theory tells you that the entire possibility of creating particle from vacuum, you know, quantum field theory, was to assume a white noise vacuum. The vacuum is a Minkowski invariant, Lorentz invariant. So meaning that it's white, it's like in physics, you, you guys experiment with every frequency has the same energy. However, Andrew points out that if you accelerate yourself, you will find that your vacuum becomes colorful. There is a black body spectrum. The vacuum is not white noise anymore. So this accelerating mirror sees a Andrew temperature. 